I'm not ashamed. What cities in Israel were given to the houses of Kohath, Gershon, and Merari? This is the question we seek to answer today as we continue our verse by verse study of the book of 1 Chronicles on walking through the Bible. Glory of his cross. Today we're going to be discussing 1 Chronicles chapter 6, verses 66 to 81. But before we do that, let's read the passage. If you have a Bible with you, turn to 1 Chronicles chapter 6, verse 66. If you don't have a Bible, don't worry, just follow along with us on the screen. The version that we'll be reading from is the New King James Version. So, 1 Chronicles chapter 6, beginning at verse 66. Now some of the families of the sons of Kohath were given cities as their territory from the tribe of Ephraim. And they gave them one of the cities of refuge, Shechem, with its common lands in the mountains of Ephraim. Also Gezer, with its common lands. Jokmium, with its common lands. Bethhoron, with its common lands. Ijalon, with its common lands. And Gathrimmon, with its common lands. And from the half-tribe of Manasseh, Aner, with its common lands, and Bilium with its common lands, for the rest of the families of the sons of Kohath. From the family of the half-tribe of Manasseh, the sons of Gershon were given Golan and Bashan with its common lands, and Ashtaroth with its common lands. And from the tribe of Issachar, Kadesh with its common lands, Dabarath with its common lands, Ramoth with its common lands, and Anim with its common lands. And from the tribe of Asher, Mashal with its common lands, Abdon with its common lands, Hukok with its common lands, and Rehob with its common lands. And from the tribes of Naphtali, Kadesh in Galilee with its common lands, Hamon with its common lands, and Kirjathaim with its common lands. From the tribe of Zebulun, the rest of the children of Merari were given Rimmon with its common lands, and Tabor with its common lands. And on the other side of the Jordan, across from Jericho, on the east side of the Jordan, they were given from the tribe of Reuben, Bezer within the wilderness with its common lands, Jaza with its common lands, Kedemoth with its common lands, and Mephath with its common lands. And from the tribe of Gad, Ramoth and Gilead with its common lands, Mahanaim with its common lands, Heshbon with its common lands, and Jazer with its common lands. This lesson represents the last lesson in our look at the Levites' generations in this section of the book. Thus far, we saw the genealogies of the family of Aaron, from which the high priests come, as well as limited genealogies of the major figures in each of the, of the three families. I do find it interesting that Moses, one of the descendants of Kohath, is only mentioned in passing in verse 3, in spite of being a major figure in Israel. Now, why do you suppose that is? Well, this is only speculation, of course. But it could have something to do with the fact that in Judges 18, verse 30, we find that one of Moses' descendants would become the idolatrous priest of Dan in the north during the period of the Judges. So, perhaps the chronicler, not wanting to highlight that which would be a stain on the family of Moses to a nation just returning from being punished in Babylon for idolatry, omitted this. Now, of course, we know that one's descendants, what one's descendants do after us doesn't affect our standing before God, but before men, such is not always the case. When someone wants to bring someone down, what do they sometimes resort to? Guilt by association or by family. Now, of course, there could be another reason that the descendants of Moses were left out, so let's not be dogmatic on our speculation, but I do find it interesting nonetheless. In verses 66 through the end of the chapter, we get the conclusion of the chronicler's description of the Levitical cities originally given to the house of Levi. Specifically, here the houses of Kohath, minus the family of Aaron, and the houses of Gershom and Merari. Just to refresh our memories on what the Levitical cities were to be, let's reread Numbers 35 verses 1 to 5 again. And the Lord spoke to Moses in the plains of Moab by the Jordan across from Jericho, saying, Command the children of Israel that they give the Levites cities to dwell in from the inheritance of their possession, and you shall also give the Levites common land around the city. They shall have the cities to dwell in, and their common land shall be for cattle and for herds and for all their animals. The common lands of the city which you will give the Levites shall extend from the wall of the city outward a thousand cubits all around. 
And you shall measure outside the city on the east side 2,000 cubits, on the south side 2,000 cubits, on the west side 2,000 cubits, and on the north side 2,000 cubits. The city shall be in the middle. This shall belong to them as common lands for the cities. Up on the screen now is what these cities would have looked like. You have the Levitical city in the middle, and you had pasture land that would extend 1,000 cubits in all directions for a total area of 2,000 cubits north to south and east to west. How these cities were distributed to the Levites were instructed by God. The families of Aaron received the 13 cities with the boundaries of the tribe, within the boundaries of the tribes of Judah, Simeon, and Benjamin. The rest of the house of Kohath received their cities in Ephraim, Dan, and West Manasseh. In delineating which cities were given, the chronicler is clarifying that these 10 cities didn't come from Manasseh only, as is said in verse 61, but all three of these tribes. The house of Gershom received their cities in the north of Israel, four from Asher, four from Issachar, and three from Naphtali, and two from East Manasseh. And then the house of Merari received two-thirds of their cities on the east side of the Jordan, with four cities coming from Gad and four from Reuben, but they did receive one-third of their cities west of the Jordan within the boundaries of the tribes of Zebulun. If you want a more detailed look at these cities, you can uh, go to our website and listen to Lessons 49 through 51 of our Joshua series that is found at eastendchurch.org under the media pull-down menu and the WTTB English podcast link. In telling Israel about these cities, the chronicler isn't telling the returning nation that they currently have control of these cities, for they would only have returned to some of the land that would have belonged to Judah, Benjamin, and some of Ephraim. No, what the chronicler is doing is telling them what had been given to them, showing them what they lost in disobeying God. Over the years until the time of Christ, the returning captives would spread out into much of what Israel possessed west of the Jordan, but they wouldn't have a king of their own to rule over them autonomously, with other nations ruling over them instead. That was the biggest difference between the returning captives and those taken away, and as such was the cost of idolatry for Israel. But they could still worship God properly under the Levitical priesthood, and they could still await the Messiah's coming, something that would happen about five and a half centuries later when Jesus came to this earth. Having now finished our look at the Levites, we'll move on to discussing some of the remaining tribes in Israel, beginning with the tribe of Issachar. So we invite you back for the next lesson. With that, our time is up for today. The Lord willing, we hope you'll join us for tomorrow's discussion of First Chronicles chapter 7, verses 1 to 13, as we continue our walk through the Bible, one verse at a time. I'm not a Thank you for watching today's episode. We hope that you found it edifying and ask that you not only subscribe to our channel and podcast, but that you like and share this episode among your friends so that the saving gospel of Jesus Christ can go out to the whole world.